Death is a funny thing. As unpleasant a topic as it can be, in Star Trek it can also be a fiercely temporary state of being. What does death mean when there's ratings to be grabbed? Oh, that main character is shuffled off the mortal coil? Well, as long as their surname isn't Dax, there's nothing final about this. Bringing characters back from the dead is an old trope of fiction, and non-fiction, depending on which section of the library you wander into. So we shouldn't be surprised that we see it in Trek. There's an entire movie about undoing one character's death, while some fairly big television reveals have featured, you guessed it, resurrections. For this list, we've opted to find a selection of methods. Are they the same person or a little changed? Are they in the same body or a new version? Have they hopped universes? In the wild world of The Final Frontier, death is, to quote a long-running sci-fi series, the equivalent of man flu. I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture, and here are 10 Star Trek characters who came back from the dead. Number 10. Daniels. Temporal Agent Daniels faced a pretty rough beginning to Star Trek Enterprise's fourth season. He had done his best via Archer to help bring the Temporal Cold War to an end, but time ran out for him in Stormfront. He appeared on the ship horribly mutated, his body existing in various time zones. The Nakul had used a temporal corridor to launch attacks through time, changing things here and there resulting in Daniel's altered state. It took Archer along with Enterprise and Silic to defeat Vosk. He was removed from history, erasing all of his actions as part of the Cold War, bringing Daniel's back to life. Daniel's seemed completely aware of what had happened, so this seems not just to be a case of hitting the reset button, but rather undoing the effects of Vosk's actions, rather than those actions themselves. Daniels did indeed die and was aware of it. Thankfully, it didn't stick. Number 9. James T. Kirk It was the scream heard worldwide, matched only by the rolling eyes of the audience. Well, that's a little unfair. Poor Spock was in turmoil. His best friend and captain, James T. Kirk, had just sacrificed himself to kickstart the Enterprise. The ship was indeed out of danger. While Spock went hunting for the man responsible, Dr. McCoy noticed a trouble very conveniently coming back to life. This trouble had been injected with Khan's super blood, giving the doctor an idea. Rather than having Spock crush the life out of a genetically engineered despot, why not just suck him dry like a vampire? A little exsanguination later, Kirk took a deep breath and opened his eyes again. He was understandably rattled and confused, but as the doctor assured him, he'd only been barely dead. That's okay then. Khan was put on ice to presumably be drained periodically, thus curing death in the Kelvin universe, and there was much rejoicing. Number 8. Dr. Culber Have you ever been on a night out and then someone snaps your neck, killing you instantly, before turning up in a strange mycelial network? No? Just me? Alright then. Well, it isn't just me, because that's exactly what happened to Dr. Hugh Culber over the first and second seasons of Star Trek Discovery. He was unceremoniously bumped off by Ash Vok, which immediately led to fan backlash. <sighs> so the new Star Trek is doing Bury Your Gaze. Groundbreaking. However, there was a twist. Culbert wasn't as gone as people feared, which was something that the producers and Wilson Cruz got out ahead of, assuring audiences that Culbert's death was really just a beginning for him. His next state of being involved a lot of mushrooms, some very trippy light shows, and a handy transporter. Culbert was back, but he came back with baggage. After all, how are you supposed to react when you see the face of the man who killed you? Frankly, I think Culber was rather chill about it all, fistfights notwithstanding. Number 7. Elnor There but for the grace of Q. As Star Trek Picard entered its second season, alternate timelines were the topic of the day, with the crew of La Serena finding themselves transported into a darker version of reality. Picard was a general, Seven was president, and Elnor was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He ended up on the business end of a disruptor, and frankly, that was that. In the season finale, Q, in an act of last-minute kindness, transported the crew back to the normal universe again, including a little extra gift. Facing a galactic event that required an entire fleet to combine its shields, the Stargazer detected that the Excelsior was struggling to keep up. Hailing them, a very surprised but very alive Elnor answered them. Q had brought the young Romulan back from the beyond, leaving the man none the worse for his experience. As Elnor was entirely absent from the third season of the show, one presumes he was spending time meditating on the nature of life, death and rebirth choose to live. Number 6. Spock This is, of course, the granddaddy of all resurrections in Star Trek. Spock's return was a gift of the character's popularity, as well as some last-minute thinking from Nicholas Meyer and Leonard Nimoy. Spock had originally been slated to die in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and stay dead, but there was rather a lot of miscommunication on the topic. Leonard Nimoy had not been as keen to leave the role as many feared, so his mind meld with McCoy was added to the script. Then, as Nimoy explained in the making of The Search for Spock, he had a job to convince Michael Eisner, then head of Paramount Pictures, that he actually did respect the role and the character. Convince them he did, and Spock was on the way back. 
After that, it was the relatively straightforward plan to regenerate his body on the newly minted surface of Genesis, then transport it back to Vulcan, where the Fal Torpan ceremony would reunite him with his mind. Easy! All it cost was the life of David Marcus. We're not exactly sure that's a bargain. Number 5. Jean-Luc Picard When it appears that Jack Crusher is also set to suffer from Eremotic Syndrome, he asks his father how he had survived it. I didn't, Picard answered sadly. The first season of Star Trek Picard saw the former Admiral's body finally shut down, artificial heart and all, succumbing to what everyone believed was an acute case of Eremotic Syndrome. Though surrounded by friends, there was little anyone could do for the man, and he died on the surface of Jure 4. That is, he was dead for a while. Alton Sung had other plans. While in a fugue-like state with Data, the android revealed to Picard that yes, he was dead, but he didn't have to stay that way. He could return to life, and he would take up residence in a golem body. When Picard opened his new cybernetic eyes, he found that he was a new man. This body was designed to be more or less identical to the one he had just vacated, sans defects in the brain. As he began to understand his new existence, his old body was locked away on Daystrom Station, where it never bothered anyone or did anything important ever again. <coughs> <coughs> Number 4. Lieutenant Worf Barrels will always be Worf's greatest nemesis, no matter how many encounters he has with a certain House of Duros. After all, despite Duros, Lursa, Bator and Toral all trying their best, none of them came close to achieving what one loose barrel managed in that afternoon. First, it fell from a height, breaking his spine. If that wasn't bad enough, a doctor of questionable ethics came aboard the ship promising the world. This was after Worf had asked Riker to kill him. It was a busy day. Ethics introduced the redundancies in Klingon physiology that allow them to bounce back from serious injury. Worf dies on the operating table, having had his spinal cord removed. When Dr. Russell inserts a new one, his body shuts down. If he were any other species, it would have been curtains for the man. As it stands, by the gift of his birthright, Worf comes back. It may have been a disturbing day for Dr. Crusher, but at least Alexander got to hold his father's hand again. Number 3. Lieutenant Shax Lieutenant Shax's death was a truly shocking moment from the first season finale of Star Trek Lower Decks. To be fair, the fact that he died in the line of duty isn't the surprising thing. Frankly, that's everything he ever wanted. It was that in no small parts, he was killed in such an unexpected, albeit heroic, way. He was definitively killed, so it was rather surprising when he appeared in the second season, despite a quick since-deleted cameo in a teaser trailer. One person to pick up on the strangest was Ensign Rutherford. He quite rightly had assumed Shaq's dead forever. The return of Shaq solidified a long-standing trope. If one is a member of the senior staff, then death does not always need to stay permanent. It may involve a koala and a black mountain, but there are ways to come back. Number 2. Tom Paris Tom Paris had a hell of a day after piloting the Cochrane and Threshold. First, he wasn't even allowed to finish his nap. It's just the worst, right? You know, then he died. As the episode is so busy, it's easy to forget that Lieutenant Paris does indeed slip off the mortal coil. This is after his allergic reaction to water, then asphyxiation from the oxygen in sickbay. Talk about an afternoon. Then his heart, back where there was only one of them, gives out from the strain of everything that's happening to him. Paris dies, the EMH pronounces him, and the autopsy and funeral arrangements begin. Paris then throws a bit of a spanner in the works by opening his eyes and asking, what's up, doc? This set of mutations that he is undergoing has, in fact, saved him from a trip to the Black Mountain, allowing him to join the ranks of Starfleet officers who treat death like a nap mid-shift. Number 1. Data Data had a bit of a rough ride that began in Star Trek Nemesis. Brent Spiner had felt for some time that he was getting too old to play the android and had requested Data be killed off in Star Trek Insurrection. When that didn't happen, he was relieved to play the big death scene in Nemesis, allowing Data a heroic death. Twenty years passed and Star Trek Picard sought to soften the harsh blow of his exit. The first season revealed that Data had been rebuilt digitally via microscopic elements of his positronic brain. In this digital land, he existed, waiting for someone to come along and switch him off. He helped Picard to choose life again while asking his former captain to shut him down. This Data quietly died, relaxed, slipping away peacefully. The third season once again brought Data back, though in a new body. This data now contained personality traits from Alton Sung, Lal, B4, and none other than Lore himself. Data, after some serious struggle with the darker half of himself, was happy to be back, enjoying his therapy time with Counselor Troy. That's everything for our list today, folks. How many people do you think should have been on this list? Let us know in the comments below. You have been awesome and wonderful. Please make sure you're following us on the various socials. I am at Sean Ferrick. Please follow us on at Trek Culture as well. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. It makes a massive difference. Thank you so much, live long and prosper, and I will see you soon, my friends. Thanks.